I now call on the class valedictorian, Ms. Kadeen Hilton. Chancellor, <laughs> Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellors, Principals, Registrars, Ministers of Government, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Officers of the University, Professors, Lecturers, Members of Staff, Honorary Graduates, Parents, Friends and Fellow Graduates, Ladies and Gentlemen, a felicitous morning to you all. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Chancellor and Dr. Michael Holding for their very inspiring and engaging addresses. The motto of the university is a light rising from the West. And we, the graduating class of 2018, will hope to be beacons of inspiration from the East, the West, the North, and the South. <laughs> Fellow graduates, like the caterpillar and the butterfly, we have survived that cathartic experience. We reached the Rubicon, arriving as graduates, and having crossed it as imperiously as Caesar did in 49 BC, we have arrived as graduates. <laughs> having said arrived, it does not mean that we have accomplished or actualized our full potential, but today it is safe to say that we, the graduating class of 2018, are on the cusp of greatness. We are here today on this hallowed campus, one which was recently ranked among the top 5% universities in the world, with our inputs being seminal. This is an acknowledgement that this great crucible of erudition has secured its place on the pantheon of greatness. Indeed, it is a testament to that immutable path set by immortal stalwarts such as the illustrious Sir Philip Sherlock and Professor Rex Nettleford of blessed memory, among many others. Today is a signal day, not just in our collective lives, but in the memories of our forefathers who have paved the way for this university to grow into a platinum brand, having blossomed and flourished for 70 years and from which we are beneficiaries. For as the great bard of Avon, William Shakespeare, so famously said through the mouth of Brutus in Julius Caesar, there is a tide in the affairs of men, which when taken on the flood, leads to fortune. On this tide, the graduates of 2018 are afloat, and we give our irrevocable promise that having seized the tide, we will ensure that this will lead not just to the fortune of ourselves, but of our beloved university, which has prepared us for what some may regard as a brutal world, but in our respectful view, also a caring world, one pregnant with promise. To our lecturers, at whose feet we supped as the Apostle Paul did with Gamaliel, enjoying every morsel of knowledge which fell from your lips, even when we were stressed out with deadlines and assignments. You made us better, not just better students, but persons generally. Individuals who are ready to take on the challenges, not just of Jamaica, but of the entire Caribbean, and I dare say, the entire world. The world is our oyster, and we are poised pearls. To the administrative, the ancillary, security, and other members of staff, to you all we owe an eternal debt of gratitude. Our respect for you is cast in concrete and lined with Wakanda vibranium. <laughs> Wakanda forever. <laughs> to our families, my mom, Lady Marge, I love you, mommy. To my rock, I love you. To those who, like us, shed blood, sweat, and tears. Today, on a camp, pop on a color, 
and give yourself a round of applause. Pat on yourself on the back because I only do it for the love and not for the likes. We have stood and cried on giant shoulders of many who have loved us unconditionally and given of themselves unselfishly and unreservedly. Chancellor, our respective parents, biological or surrogate, brothers, sisters, friends, loved ones, veritable pillars of support who have sacrificed financially and otherwise without whom we would not be here today, resplendent in our respective attire and basking in the glow of accomplishment. We found family through understanding common hardship. It is it is from this that initiatives like the CB Group UE5K was born so as to give scholarships to many deserving students. Many of those recipients are in this very tent today. We could find support from our initiatives from families that we had on the various halls of residence. Many of you, like myself, often slept in the library, burning the midnight oil so as to actualize our dreams and the dreams bestowed upon us by our parents, our families, and our communities. As Longfellow penned, which was epigrammatically captured in song by Beanie Man, the heights of great men were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. We recognized that by the dint of hard work, as Bob Marley said, our children, our relatives, will never want for bread. Speaking of bread, Nardo's corn dogs rescued us many a day and many a night. The bun and cheese from Marie's stall when funds were low. The platinum flitters and fried dumpling with a taste good gravy kept hunger at bay while we pressed to achieve our goals. And also the stalls over by SR16 catch up with stomach when we needed to rush to class. On the halls, there was cultural exchange at a granular level. Across Jamaica on a Sunday, you will always find somebody cooking rice and peas. Jamaicans learned to switch it up a bit. We learned about chana, aisle dung, doubles, roti, pilau, cuckoo, and flying fish. Our platinum experience during this marvelous sojourn was demonstrated on the halls where we not only lived as diverse Caribbean nationals, but we grew to understand each other's cultures. Similarly, our Caribbean brothers and sisters understood water shortage. They understood long, winding SAS lines, integration Thursdays, and robot taxis. One already to a move. The halls have helped to shape us and galvanize our character. Family and friends, look around you. What do you see? You see a tent. Well, you might see a tent, but we see exams. Frustration, anxiety, invigilators, and we can hear the ominous words, stop all writing, stop all writing. Law students, your additional 15 minutes are up. Stop all writing, put the pens down. Well, the time is indeed up and we can get up and stand up, humble yet proud on this auspicious occasion. As graduates, we are now among the privileged few not because we are better than others, but because we are recipients of a pricey, yet priceless education from this noble and platinum university. As the French would say, noblesse oblige, responsibility comes with rank. And as a result of our training and the pearls of wisdom we have assimilated, we appreciate that to whom much is given, much is expected. Consequently, my fellow graduates from the Faculty of Social Sciences have to be social, not just in name, but in nature. Your training is particularly important as not only Jamaica, but various societies across the region are grappling with difficult economic times and a multiplicity of social ills. Yours is the charge to put your collective shoulders to the wheel and do your very best to, that you can ameliorate the situation. Similarly, 
my fellow graduates from the Faculty of Law. We have a unique duty to our respective societies, having regard to the fact that laws govern nations. Although we are not yet lawyers, and not necessarily all of us will attend law school or practice law, we must still be cognizant of the fact that we are on the periphery, and I dare say the cusp, of a, entering a very noble profession. We must uphold the principles of honesty, integrity, and probity of character. When the time comes, we must give of our services gratuitously, readily, and meticulously to address the many problems besetting the court system and the justice system, such as the backlog of cases, improving the legal aid system and the judiciary, and eradicating the negative perceptions that too many lawyers have held. We must stand up and be counted, and we must make a difference. We recognize that kings are dying, and clowns are rising. Many people have become lambs to the slaughter. They are no longer people, but sheep. They need leaders, thinkers, and problem solvers. We have to provide guidance and help to edify the society. With posterity leading the resounding applause, we want you, our lecturers, or families, or friends, and well-wishers, to be able to look back and say in approbation, yes, they are the graduates par excellence. And on Friday, November 2, 2018, we knew that they were on the cusp of greatness. Finally, using the vernacular immortalized by the iconic Miss Lou in her inimitable fashion, everybody big up on a nice, clean self, and bust a Miss Kitty Blank. Thank you.